and they're off in the Preakness. And they're into the stretch. Cortland Simmons with you here at the CS Racing Report and with the Preakness uh, recap won by early voting in 154.54 for the mile and 3 16 and as you look at the order of finish and the margins of victory winning time and so forth and start breaking down these numbers uh, in going from fourth to first secret oath um, she trailed in this race once again, like in the Arkansas Derby, made a big move, three and a half furlongs out, you know, just picked up horses, you know, you know picking them off one by one, then tailed off in the stretch, much like at Oaklawn, one pace, um, pretty much describes, you know, summarize, sums it up for her. Um, creative Minister, uh, inside trip, got a nice run there, stalked very, very nicely, professionally, um, made his move, accelerated in the stretch, drifted from the inside to the middle of the racetrack, but ran, uh, I described it as he ran on with encouragement he's going to be running in the belmont stakes ran a 100 buyer uh, the runner-up is of course the source of a lot of uh bandying about and 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 mystery he he normally shows more speed he was pinched i had a momentary steadying some similar to a secret oath in the run-up to the first turn um as i said got a good rail trip uh, or inside run covered up he uh, drove in the stretch Picked up horses nicely, second best. Uh, he was never going to, you know, you know, catch early voting. Look momentarily that he might be able to make up the deficit. Matched his buyer top in the Louisiana Derby with a 102. In the winner, stalked beautifully behind Armagnac. Uh, three and a half furlongs out, you know, made his move, blew by that horse, accelerated you know, punched into another gear, drifted a couple times in the stretch. That's something that's going to be talked about in the weeks to come. Was clear and a comfortable winner, even though Epicenter came on in the stretch, which, of course, um, basically transitions me into the future of these horses. The winner and Epicenter will not run in the Belmont, but there are a number of horses that will. But in terms of Epicenter, he just didn't show any early speed in this race. He's a horse, we've seen him be tactical, and I think he got a little bit too comfortable with the style of running off a hot pace that he employed in the Kentucky Derby. And it might have been a function of him being a little fatigued from all those efforts at Churchill Downs. He's going to get a, a chance to freshen up, and we're going to find out if he's going to improve or is this the fastest he can go? Because as I said in the preview pod, it was imperative. He not only matches buyer top, but surpass it by a few points, three to five points or more to be able to, you know, wrap it up and beat these horses. And early voting uh, was able to answer the question that was being asked, who could step up? And he was able to do that, improving nine points from his buyer top, which is a big, big turnaround or, you know, a tremendous improvement from his 78 in the early part of his career, four starts in. Secret Oath, she, her timing and tactics have to be sharpened a little bit back to the honeybee where she stalked and exploded, even though she had to be, uh, uh, had to steady and check. And if she can do that in big races and sustain her run, which you would think being closer she would, given that you just don't have as much ground to have to make up and real estate to cover, uh, she should be, you know, very, very, you know, she, that should serve her very, very well. And I think Wayne Lucas is going to be looking at that. The only caveat is, is that by showing that early speed going around the ground, will that take away from the firepower uh, in the stretch and her finish? But I think that's the tactic that we, I think has served her best. And she's gotten into the habit of falling behind in races. So that's going to be something we're going to have to look and see. Creative minister finished third the upside or the encouragement or the improvement in his buyer moving up to 100 uh, in a Preakness stakes in which two of the horses that finished ahead of him won't be in the Belmont. Will that be applicable in or at 12 furlongs? Can he go 12 furlongs and use this performance as a springboard uh, to emerge uh, in the Belmont stakes? And, you know, in and in talking about those runners, when you look at the uh, probables or likely uh, participants in this race, or at least the featured horses, he obviously fits in with the 100 creative minister. We the people, a horse that I was on in Arkansas, he, uh, you know, absolutely, uh, was, the Arkansas Derby was an absolute disaster. He has definitely righted his ship uh, since that time with a 103, 10 and one quarter length win over the Belmont surface 
in the Peter Pan. It was very, very impressive. And he looks like the speed in this race. And it's 12 furlongs versus nine. It's going to be very, very interesting where he is amongst these contenders that you see. He obviously is a point higher uh, than a creative uh, uh, minister and two points higher than the Derby winner. But again, going 12 furlongs, that can all change. We're going to certainly, uh, you know, tie and wrap it up into a nice, neat little bow in terms of the lead up to the Belmont Stakes. But in the meantime, early voting, the son of horse of the year, Gunrunner, trained by Chad Brown, ridden by Jose Ortiz, owned by Claridge Stables. Seth Claridge winning the Preakness on his birthday. He wins the second jewel of the Triple Crown in 154.54. Early voting comes inside and wins it.